that we worship none but Allah. Allah the Almighty, the creator of this universe, has placed us as Muslims in the Holy Quran. This is his book. It's a book, a miracle of miracles. Special cooking. Today, I'll be talking about Dawah islam an invitation toward Islam. And there is no restriction of age, and there is no restriction of gender, color, nothing at all. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أدعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعزة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقطة باللسان يفقه قولي O oh my Lord, expand me my breast, make my task easy for me, and remove the impediment from my speech, so they may understand what I say. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Ismail Khan is another budding IIS Dai with a brilliant academic record. He was born on 24th July 2000, less than nine years old, a class four student, is a keen football player. His hobbies include cycling, swimming, and reading particularly the Quran. Ismail Khan has received Certificate of Excellence in Sports, Taekwondo, English and Writing, Dua, Urdu, Arabic Public Speaking, as well as English Public Speaking. Alhamdulillah, he wants to be a Dai, strongly determined to spread peace and beautiful message of Islam in the light of Surah Nahal. Chapter number 16, verse 125. Udu'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal ma'wizati al hasana ajadilhum billati hiya ahsan. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. His mission includes to start a school like Islamic International School, inshallah. So brothers and sisters, we have Ismail Khan advising you to be away from Allah's wrath, the two extremes and the middle path. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam ala Rasulillah. وَلَا آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِ يَجْمَعِينَ أَمَّا بَعْدْ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا أَعْتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارِ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَى نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ قال برشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقو قولي Respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you.
the topic of my talk is the two extremes and the middle path allah the almighty the creator of this universe has praised us as muslims in the holy quran by saying in surah ali imran chapter number 3 verse number 110 kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil nas you are the best nation produced as an example for mankind and allah also talks about us in surah al baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 143 saying wa kadhalika ja'alnakum ummatan wasatan and thus we have made you a just community so this is what a muslim should be you have to be balanced and you have to be in the middle path if you look at the hadith of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's mentioned in jami at tirmidhi he told us that his followers his ummah will be divided into 73 factions 73 sects all of it will be hell with the exception of one and i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he makes me and you among this particular one only one will be in the jannah so the companion said which one who are they so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it is the jama it is the unity and not in the sense of numbers because if you look at us muslims we are great in numbers but we are not a unity we are not a jama ibn masud the son of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who used to carry what of his ablution all the time who took more than 70 chapters of the quran died from prophet's mouth he says jama the unity means whatever corresponds to truth even if this meant that you are alone look at the time of abraham he's born him where abraham was alone and the whole population of earth was against him but at that particular time he was the jama he was doing what allah subhanahu wa taala told him to do he was worshiping allah alone and that made him the jama we have to identify which faction is on the correct and middle path it is reported in sahih al bukhari volume 3 book of fasting hadith number 1968 salman al farsi may allah be pleased with him the truth seeker when he came to madina the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam joined him and a companion by the name abu darda he made them brothers and that was in the very beginning of the hijra or migration they became so close that they could inherit each other to that extent that they were of the same flesh and blood so salman went to his brother's house and he saw his wife not wearing properly in the sense that she is not taking care of herself she didn't do any makeup she didn't do a hair she didn't do anything well that was in the very beginning of the madinan era where hijab was not yet enforced so sanman looked at his sister in law and said umme darda what happened to you she said look at your brother abu darda he is useless he prays to allah all night and fasts at the day time what time is that for us so salman said no problem when abu darda saw his brother salman he brought food for him as a gesture of goodwill you know when a guest is coming you feed them so salman said eat abu darda said i'm fasting i can't eat he told him by allah you will eat otherwise i'm not going to eat i'm your guest abu darda said okay this is a voluntary fast i'll make it some other day and he broke his fast after a sharp prayer when they were supposed to sleep and they didn't have a guest room but they had only one room to stay in abu darda stood up and wanted to pray the night prayer after isha this was his usual routine from 9 o'clock until 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the morning he is standing in prayer this is the norm for all companions and for righteous people so salman told him go to bed abu darda said but i want to pray go to bed salman said so he left and he went to sleep and hour later he looked it's night he wants to go and pray salman told him go to bed not now and just be of fajr prayer about half an hour or an hour salman told him now we pray and they stood up and prayed until fajr prayer after they finished he gave an advice to his brother he told him abu darda 
Allah the Almighty has rights over you. Your wife has rights over you. Your friends and visitors have rights over you. And your body has rights over you. Therefore give each one his own rights. This is the balance in Islam. Abu Darda did not accept what is Salman is talking about. He went to the Prophet ﷺ to cross check it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, This is exactly the truth. You have to follow what Salman, may Allah be pleased with him, told you. If you look at the imbalance in your life, it's overwhelming. You find people and the majorities of the Muslims who spend almost their entire life as if there is no akhirah, as if there is no hereafter. They work for this life, they'll even die for this life. They spend almost their time trying to make a decent and honest or not honest Real, dollar, rupee, or whatever. This is all what they care about. They live and die for their lust and desires. And on the opposite side, you will find people who think that they are being good at the side of Allah. So what they do is stay in their masjid, stay in their houses of worship, praying to Allah, fasting, doing good things on the surface. But they don't work. They depend entirely on the people to support them. If you look at Islam, Islam is the religion of balance between this life and the hereafter. And it tells you clearly that whenever there is a conflict, you should choose the hereafter. And this is that a lot of us don't understand. We are good Muslim as long as my salary is in my bank account at the end of the month. I am good Muslim as long as my wife is okay. And my children are doing fine or doing well. But if there is a calamity, if I had to make the choice between this life and what please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Well, Allah is ghafoor rahim. He is most forgiving and most merciful. But my boss is not. So I have to please my boss. I started my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran. From Surah Al-Qasas, chapter 28, verse 77. Wa ma dunya. But see, through that which Allah has given you, the home of the hereafter, and yet do not forget the share of this world, and do good as Allah has done good to you. The origin of all this is the hadith of the Prophet It's mentioned in Sayyid al-Bukhari, volume 3, book of Nikah, hadith number 5063, where three men came to visit the Prophet houses. And checked about how he used to pray and fast. So they asked the mother of the believers, the wives of the Prophet وسلم, what's the Prophet's conduct? So they told them about his conduct. The three of them sat down and one of them said, I believe that he is the Prophet of Allah and Allah has forgiven all his previous sins and the coming sins. He has nothing to worry about. So let's do something really strong in Islam. So one of them said, I'll never marry. He doesn't want to marry a woman at all. He wants to live a life without any marriage. The other one said, I'll never sleep. Immediately after Isha prayer, I'll pray until Fajr prayer. The third one said, I'll never break my fasting. I'll fast every single day. This is how Allah will forgive our sins. The Prophet peace be upon him heard about this. He was furious. He was angry. He came on the member praised Allah and said, Why do I hear from my followers, from my companions, say so and so? By Allah, I pray at night and I sleep. I fast the day and I break my fast. And I marry women. This is the human nature. And he said, فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Whoever chooses the path other than mine will not be considered to be from my followers. Look at this. And finally, is a choice for us to be balanced. Is it something that we can say, I like to be balanced? One would say, no, I like to be an extremist. No, it is not a choice. It's an instruction from Allah the Almighty for us to be balanced and to be on the middle path. Otherwise, you will not qualify from that sect that is following the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. And that would be salvage and safe from hellfire. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would benefit us from what we have heard and that he will join us on the day of judgment with the Prophet ﷺ and his companions 
وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاك الله برده for your talk Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in chapter number 4 verse 177 لا تغلو في دينكم do not commit excess in your religion may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to follow the balanced path the right path Ameen Amreen Shay a class 5 student born on 15th March 1999 10 years of age is good in academics and loves reading her credentials include excellent communication skills certificate of excellence in English and Arabic public speaking history and geography she has also won medals in sports A confident Amri wants to be a doctor and take up dawa as her career. Originally from London, has come to India to accomplish in Islamic education at Islamic International School. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help her fulfill her aspirations. Ameen. Brothers and sisters, we are aware that even before accepting islam as a staunch opponent of islam hazrat umar radhiyallahu anhu said about the quran what excellent and dignified words are these even if people of corrupt mentality create obstacles amreen sheikh reaffirms al quran the miracle of miracles الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقالوا لولا أنزل عليه آيات من ربه قل إنما الآيات من الله وإنما آذير مبين أولم يكفهم أن أنزل عليك الكتاب يدل عليهم إن في ذلك الرحمة وذكرى لقوم يؤمنون رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأغدة من لساني يفقه قولي Respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters I welcome you all with Islamic greeting Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you The topic of my talk is Al-Qur'an, a miracle of miracles. Let me explain to you what a miracle is. A miracle is an impossibility, something beyond human endeavor, human effort. To every nation before Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets and mankind had a tendency to demand proof by some supernatural acts. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, the holy prophet Moses, he was given a type of miracle which was akin to magic. So he had to contend with these magicians and Allah gave him a miracle to confound these magicians. Fir'aun, thinking that Musa alayhi salam was another magician, brought forth his own magicians to play the part. And the Egyptian magicians had their little, little magic sticks, magic wands. And they threw them on the ground and all these little sticks became little, little snakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already given Hazrat Musa alayhi salam experience with his rod on the mount. Now he knew what he had to do. So he threw the rod and the rod turned into a serpent. And this serpent swallowed up all the little snakes of the Egyptian magicians. And Hazrat Musa alayhi salam picked up the serpent and it turned back once more into a rod. 
and the Egyptian magicians realize this is no magic. This is not hypnotism nor mesmerism because to hypnotize a person, you cast a spell. You make the person see what is really not there. An illusion is created. The sticks to make it appear as snakes, it would have been by casting a spell. But here, all the little sticks vanished. To mesmerize, it would have been to make the snakes appear as sticks. But here, all the little sticks vanished into the serpent, and the serpent was a rod, and the rod was no thicker than it was before. A greater miracle! And the Egyptian magicians confess that this is no magic. This is something beyond. It's a miracle, real miracle, not magic. Allah gives the miracle according to the mentality, the needs of the people. People with magical minds were confounded with magic, superior magic, real magic. Hazrat Isa Jesus Christ, when he appears in the scene, he comes among people who were steeped in Greek medicine. They would perform wonders with this medicine, so Allah gave him healing powers, healing those born blind. If somebody goes blind by some shock, damage or infection, it is quite a different thing from those born blind. Allah gave him those healing powers of healing those born blind and the lepers and bringing back the dead, reviving the dead, bismillah, a different type of miracle to convince the people. Our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he comes among people who boasted about their language, eloquence and poetry. They said, we are eloquent people. We are the Arabs and the rest of the world is ajam, dumb compared to us. So among such people, when he comes along, the greatest miracle that he gave was the Quran. The language of the Quran in the first instance was beating the people and the people would sense, realize this is not poetry, this is not prose, this is something beyond the understanding and the people accepted the faith. Now let us see what a non-Muslim has to say about Quran and its eloquence. Reverend Bosworth Smith, a Christian missionary, he wrote a book on Muhammad and Muhammadism. In this book he says about our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Holy Quran. He says illiterate himself, an Ummi scarcely able to read or write. He was yet the author of the book, which we Muslims do not agree that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the author of the book. He says, according to his belief and understanding, that Muhammad is the author of the book, which is a poem, a code of laws, a book of common prayers, and a Bible all in one. This one miracle claimed by Muhammad wasallam, his standing miracle he called it. A miracle indeed it is. Without doubt, it is a mu'jizah. An enemy testifies that this is a miracle indeed.